I'd like to welcome everyone to the Clarkston Independence District Library Board of Trustees meeting for November 16th. The meeting is called to order at 5.32. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Dan Gaffney? Here. Michelle Ginn? Here. Dan Green? Here. Mary Hember? Here. Sally Lamb? Here. Allison McFadden Kiesling? Here. Marilyn Pomeroy? Here. Julie Hunter? Here. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> the approval of the agenda. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve tonight's agenda as presented. Comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion is approved. We have some public tonight. Hello, Marion. Hi there. Uh, in case you haven't heard, we are preparing for our annual holiday sale that will take place the first weekend of December. And this is a much smaller sale compared to our spring and our fall ones. The items there are primarily books. They're new and basically once read books that look just like new. And the items and other items that possibly would be of interest to uh, be purchased around the holidays. Uh, the prices are just a little bit more than what they are for spring and fall because of the quality of the books and the other items. But they still are bargains compared to if you went to a bookstore or a department store. In case you haven't noticed, the statue that was donated to us was moved and with the help of the garden club who will next spring uh, actually do the landscaping. It was positioned in its new home and the friends did pay to have it moved a whole 30 feet. <laughs> but it's there and it's hopefully in a safer spot. And finally at our last board meeting Julie spoke to us about the strategic plan procedure that you are starting to undertake and about the Harwood Institute. She showed us a clip from there so we have a more of an idea of how you're looking to proceed and that your vision is now turning outward and the pro uh, procedure is to do more listening and engagement with the community instead of saying here's what we have for you working with the community to expand beyond the four walls of working together to be a solid, cohesive entity in the community. Mm -hmm. So you. we'll be listening for more <laughs> because this will affect us and how we proceed also in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the consent agenda, their motion to approve that. So I moved. Okay. I'll second. Which one of you takes the Jan? Jan? Jan. Okay. okay, it's been moved and seconded to accept the consent agenda. No one wishes to remove any particular item. In that case, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, library statistics. Um, the statistics are um, before you. Uh, Christina is working on a way to um, make them a little more um, graphically appealing. <laughs> so, she, so she did a test run with the staff um, from last month's statistics and it was well received. So in next month's statistics you will see some pie charts and some bar graphs and some other interesting things. Mm -hmm. so. 
I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. D O W. I always forget what that means. Day of the week. Thank you. I will mention that to him and see if maybe he will adjust that. <laughs> because oh, right. you're not the only one who has a that. So. Um, uh, usage is continuing to grow. We do have. Um, and I'm not talking so much about the September and the October statistics. They're not 100% accurate because our, in terms of visitors because our people counter died um, unexpectedly. Usually it lasts 11 um, months. The battery died. Oh. Normally the, we know when the battery is going to die. It lasts about 11 months and I'm not sure why the battery didn't last as long as we got a defective battery or whatever. But we lost about um, two weeks of traffic um, because it died, it must have died at the end of the week. We didn't catch it. He, he compiles once a week. And then <coughs> we the special order the battery for it. It was another week, so we lost two weeks worth of statistics. So, in terms of visitors, the numbers are not entirely accurate. Okay. But everything else is. Okay. Thank you. Library director's report. Okay. Um, in terms of finances, um, Library director, the library, library's attorney, the township's attorney, um, held a phone meeting to discuss the draft of the contract from the township's attorney regarding the OPEB funds that have been held in trust by the township in the library's name. Um, all parties agreed that the library's attorney would make proposed changes to the document based on these discussions and provide the update, updated draft to the township's attorney for review. Um, this process is continuing to move forward with the intention of trying to conclude this negotiation by the end of 2015. Um, we're still hopeful. We're, it seems to be going. Um, in terms of building and grounds, um, the final inspection of phase one of the library's parking lot project was to take place on Friday, November 13th. We are awaiting the final report from the engineer. Uh, the initial surveying work for phase two of the project has begun. Phase two includes the driveway around the island, the handicapped parking area, and the concrete work across the entrance of the building. The engineer has some concerns regarding the handicapped parking area. At the time the building was built, the grade in that area was up to ADA code. However, the code has changed since 1992, so we will need to make adjustments at the same time we are repaving that area. Um, the engineer is considering a number of options to correct the issue, so the board will have some decisions to make prior to the RFP going out. Um, the goal is to bid out phase two by the end of the year in order to get the next portion of the project on the chosen contractor's calendar for spring of 2016. Our preference would be to have that work done in May so that it would be complete for our busy summer season. Um, so I, the engineer is, um, there's a couple different options that he's put out there for you to discuss and I'll just mention what they are. The first is that he would, that we would change the grade itself. Um, it's too steep. Yeah. Um, the other option would be to move the handicap parking. Mm -hmm. And he's looking at what those options could or would be. Um, so I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. He said, would the board be open to that? And I said, I don't know. I think you're going to have to <laughs> give us some, some suggestions. Yes, like where? So, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, but I told him to bring all options, and, and it would be up to you to decide. So I just want you to be aware of that's kind of where he is with it. The original plan was to just regrade it, but now he's looking at it with new eyes. Okay. Since he's specifically doing that piece of the project. Now, does phase two, does that include a round to the back door? Mm hmm Okay. Yep. It would be um, this piece of the driveway right. all the way around the island, around the back door, and, and potentially the moving of the things that part of the place would be, things to be appropriate, and that's what the board wants to do. Uh, but he's going to bring multiple choice, multiple choices. Okay. Yeah. And that would be the time. And exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm having a hard time picturing where else it would be any better. Mm -hmm. but, um, but he had some thoughts. And so hmm. He may come back and tell you that exactly what what the original plan was is the way to go, but he just wanted to make you aware that that, that could be a possibility that we should be considering. So. Um, and then collaborations and projects, the Friends of the Library, as Marian pointed out, will hold their holiday book sale on Saturday, December 5th and Sunday, December 6th. Um, this is a popular annual event known as the Better Books Sale with items um, of the giving quality. So. Reiterate that, please. We're looking the forward. Sale. Yeah, that's right. All right, on to regular business. We want to review and approve the bid to purchase desktop computers. Um, okay, so from uh, Bill Bowman, our head of circulation IT coordinator, uh, per the 2015 technology plan and budget, 
Um, there were to be a group of staff computers replaced in 2015. Um, this is Grin from his perspective. I sent requests to vendors, um, both ones whom we have worked with in the past, and a new vendor, GHA Technologies, Inc. The 10 computer price was aggregated from each vendor and shown in the attached spreadsheet. Um, I did have him make sure to put a key to his color code. He did not do that the last time, and I know that was a little confusing, so we have fixed that this time. Um, as the lowest bidder, GHA Technologies is being recommended as the vendor for this purchase. Any questions regarding this or not? Has Bill seen their work anywhere else? Um, he he works with vendors that have been utilized by other libraries. He makes sure to check recommendations okay. of other libraries. He um, he's a little bit um, reluctant to work with anybody that another library has not stepped up and said yes. We've had a good experience. Good. So, yes, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's important. It, it is. <laughs> We've, we've been burned before, so we don't do that anymore. All of the bids are relatively close in price. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it's more of a concern if they're way a low ball bid, mm -hmm. and then you think, oh, there's, that's, there's that's a problem. But they're, they're, these are very, they're relatively close enough. Offer. Yeah, they're close enough that it probably is just, they're just being competitive, so they can mm -hmm. pick up some new business. So. I think so. I would move that we approve the purchase. Um, it was a different project. That was a server. Okay. These are. He used the same color code. That's what threw me off. It looks very similar. Yeah. You will get used to this now. Okay. So we'll be <coughs> That's, That's, That's okay. All right. So these are for ten yep. computers. Ten computers. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a bid. Or, I mean, I'll entertain a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I was making the motion while well, I was asking the question. All right. So it's been moved and seconded that we accept the recommended purchase price of seven, <clears throat> $7,602.60 to be paid to GHA Technologies for the purchase of these 10 computers. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, number two. Okay, this is also from Bill, um, our head of circulation IT coordinator. Um, this is a conversation that has been started amongst the staff, and we're just looking for some feedback. Um, the library's integrated library system, um, known as an ILS um, Polaris, has a feature that allows for auto renew. This automatically renews a patron's materials if the materials are able to be renewed, meaning that a hold has not been placed on the item by another patron and that the item has not reached its renewal limit. The staff has shown interest in the possibility of enabling this feature. However, before discussing the possibility further, we felt we should request some feedback from the library board. This is a convenience service for our patrons because it helps to prevent fines. It also counts an item as an additional circulation instead of allowing the item to become overdue. Another Polaris feature that we do provide to patrons to assist in preventing late fees includes email and or text reminders of items coming due. So we do have some uh, methods in place that we help to prevent late fees. Um, in researching other Polaris libraries' use of this feature, those that have enabled it feel it is a positive, convenient service that patrons love. It focuses on customer satisfaction and use of the collection instead of the penalties for late returns. Libraries that choose not to enable the feature cite potential loss of revenue and feel it pads circulation statistics. They also mention that patrons may be upset if only some of their items automatically renew as items on hold or at their loan limit will not be renewed. Fines for overdue materials at the Clarkston Independent District Library make up less than 1% of the library's annual operating budget. While we do not want to diminish revenues or minimize any revenue stream, the staff's initial conversations would indicate that we feel the goodwill that would be developed with our community by providing this convenience will, would far outweigh the potential loss of funds. The purpose of bringing this to the board prior to any formal proposal of policy change is to gather any questions or concerns that, would, that should be addressed during further staff discussions. So the only possible loss of revenue would be with overdue fines. It wouldn't mm -hmm. cost any more to enable? Nope. It does not. So it's just an additional reminder well, and automatic renewal. Then if you turn your material in, that goes away. away. Yep. So it was really interesting because we looked at it and thought, oh, this is a really neat service. And then 
I, Bill, I don't know if I would call it made the mistake, but um, there is a listserv for our, for our um, ILS. And he sent out an email, and a very heated discussion ensued. And he was really surprised that the people that really wanted to do it were all about the customer satisfaction and the service and the convenience. And the people that were against it were saying, well, you're going to lose revenue, and, and um, it pads your circulation. And they were very heated that they would never do that. And, and, and so he came to me, he was very upset. He said, I, I think we need to ask the board about this before we go forward. And I said, well, obviously, I think that's a good plan. So, um, so you know, he and I sat down and talked about it, and I did mention that it is only one, the fines and fees are only 1% of our total operating budget. Um, and really, our goal is not to, the purpose of fines and fees is not to gain money. It's not supposed to be a revenue stream. It's supposed to be Get the a return. gentle deterrent <laughs> so that the materials come back in a timely fashion. Um, and the interesting piece of that is that when the bottom fell out of the economy, a number of libraries reassessed the amount they were charging for fines and raised their prices, thinking that you know that would increase revenues. And actually what it did was exactly what it was originally intended to do. It got the materials back, and their revenues dropped. <laughs> so, um, so I guess my take on this is um, I would tend to be amongst those on staff that feel this would be a convenience. Um, it would prevent us from um, sometimes being accused of, of maybe if you've got a, a DVD and you, especially a DVD because they're a little especially. pricier, yeah. and you forget to bring it back, if it could be renewed, it would automatically do that. That would be great for people with little kids because a lot of those children's DVDs don't have holds on them. Um, so why gather money from somebody just because you know they it's have in the child, backpack out about it and, <laughs> and, and, and or under the bed yeah. or between the cushions on the couch or whatever happens to it? So. Is there any way to minimize the confusion about why some items would renew and some wouldn't, like with the notification that goes out and says these items are due? It's, I, um, there is a um, document in here that yeah, talks about back. how auto renew happens. Okay. Um, and essentially you'll see that when something is automatically renewed, um, you do get contacted and there's a sample that shows what has been renewed and what has not been renewed. So uh, I mean, this is yeah. in addition to what a patron already gets when something is overdue or going to be due, yeah. you get that reminder, mm -hmm. and it shows you that you also have these checked out. It's exactly. the same categories, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You, you will get notified. Yeah. I do have a question. What, what are the negatives for those people that were concerned about padding the circulation numbers? Um, what, what is the concern there? It, I guess, to my mind, it, I, I guess it's a perspective sort of thing that, let's say um, you have a DVD and you're running late and you um, you don't return it the day it's due. Mm -hmm. It will check it out for a whole nother week and count it as an additional circulation. Um, but then when you bring it back, you've only kept it one extra day. And so the argument is that that's not in this person, in this group perspective, of, in this perspective, that, that that's not a full circulation. And I quite often because they're not new. using it a second right. time, yeah. they're still using. They're it. just still using it one more day. Yeah. But I do that even when I renew books. If I if mm -hmm. I get my email and your books are due tomorrow and I'm not coming to the library tomorrow, yeah. I renew everything that's up for renewal, and then mm -hmm. I may bring them all back the day after. Mm -hmm. I may already be done reading some of them, mm -hmm. but it's things. not convenient to return them at that moment. Yeah. So in practice, that probably happens a lot. Already. It, right. I think it probably does. I think it's. Um, yeah. It's a it's a bit of statistical rigidity, I think I would call it, <laughs> um, in, in terms of interpretation. I don't think that by doing auto renew that we're going to see this massive jump in statistics. Um, I, what it will do, though, is count something as being checked out again if the person is a day or two late, because we're not actually calculating that. They are keeping it an additional if they're keeping it two or three days late. Instead, we would not be charging them. Plus. Um, it would be counting as an additional circulation because they are still hanging on to it. So it's, to my mind, it's sort of, it's a give and take, six to one, half to the other. Yes. Kind of However, my on. question, my comment would be what <clears throat> the statistics are used for, I mean, you're collecting statistics, but there has to be a purpose for the statistics. Right. And I believe we're looking at statistics in that is this item going to stay on the shelf? Is mm -hmm. this a popular item? Is this something that we need Absolutely. more copies of? Are we ready mm -hmm. to withdraw this because it is not circulating since we're not an archive? 
we don't keep them. Right. Unfortunately, we don't keep them forever. <laughs> so when you start that, you want to go back and start that series, some of those early ones may not be here anymore if they were no longer being checked out. So as long as it doesn't harm the analysis of whether or not we need more materials, Mm -hmm. I'd certainly go with the convenience. I think that's a very astute observation. Yes, I, yeah. I, like, I like the goodwill. And I like creating the goodwill, but, but <laughs> Marilyn's right. We don't want, if, if it would skew the statistics to the level where we might then um, not be adding or deleting from the collection mm -hmm. in the most efficient way. So that's something for the staff to look at, because okay. obviously yeah. they're the experts on that and not me. I think they were most concerned because um, when Bill did send out the question and the heated debate, he thought, oh, we should only see which side of the, the <laughs> conversation the board would be on before we proceed. If they're absolutely against the idea, then maybe we go work on other projects and not worry about this one. No. But well, another thing is it won't renew until the day that it's due. Yeah. So. Like, like you were pointing out, you renew two days before. I might, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, so the likelihood is, is that if, if you're going to have it that long, you would have renewed it anyway, so that's kind of a moot point. And, and the other thing is, is that when you're renewing a book, you don't want to renew it two days before because you want to have it for those additional three weeks, and you don't want to lock off those two days, so it's another good system. You don't have to remember will, to do it on that day. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, I like it. I mean, yeah, I the only thing that, as pointed out, the only thing that we are a little bit concerned about is educating the public to make sure that they do realize that if there is an item on hold, it, it won't renew, and that one will accrue fines. Mm -hmm. And if there is something that has reached its loan limit in terms of the number of renewals, because right. we do limit the number of times you can renew something, right. that it will not renew. Well, it may take a, a while, or it may take a question from mm -hmm. a, a patron. And, and it's like a roundabout. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> used to it. <laughs> it is. I'm not used to them yet. <laughs> I think this one will be a little less damaging. <laughs> Does it need a motion? No, we just wanted some feedback to make okay. sure that we weren't going down a path that we should not be wasting our time on. So that was all that. That's all that it was. <laughs> all right. Now talk about money. How about the discussion for funding of pre-work on phase two of the parking lot project? Um, this one's not particularly complicated either. Um, at the October 19th meeting, uh, the library board discussed the importance of bidding out phase two of the parking lot project prior to the end of 2015 in order to ensure that it is on the chosen contractor's calendar early in the paving season. The cost of this pre-work is current, currently budgeted for 2016. Um, and my goal here tonight is to provide you with budget adjustment options um, for deciding how to fund this in 2015 instead of 2016. So what you have in front of you is um, basically the contract um, that says that we indeed are going to continue working with HRC, which um, based on um, previous board discussions is my understanding that that's what we would like to do. Um, he has given us what the cost will be, um, $24,736 for the engineering portion of it for 2016. And what I asked him to do was break out how much we would need to pay in 2015, which is $18,500. Um, it's not budgeted in 2015, it's budgeted in 2016. And so I talked to the accountant and she basically said, why don't you just take it out of fund balance and next year put it back into fund balance. <laughs> so that's my recommendation, is that we take $18,500 out of fund balance, put it in for 2015, and then next year we'll take that $18,500 out of that lineup because we won't need it and put it back into fund balance. Okay, any comments? Questions? Yeah, it sounds like good advice from our professional. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because we do want to lock this in, and that's. And mm -hmm. you know, if it needs to be done now, it needs to be done now. Right. Mm -hmm. it's another service for the public to be yeah, done. Yeah, it's doing that better. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll and accept the motion. What it, basically what I need is a is a motion that we would move eighteen thousand five hundred dollars from fund balance to. Um, Account 818. Perfect. I move that we move $18,500 from fund balance to account 583. No, 818. 818. I'm sorry. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we will move $18,500 from our fund balance to account 818 in order to facilitate work on the second phase of the parking lot this year. 
So we'll be ready for next year. Any comments or questions? In that case, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, nay. Motion carries. <coughs> and number four, update on the strategic planning process, the discussion of the Harwood project. Um, I will comment simply to say the board did have a workshop um, on strategic planning last Monday, which was open to the public. And we looked at the process, we participated in the process, and we're ready to discuss. Okay. Um, at a special meeting on November 9th, the library board learned more about the Harwood Institute training that the library director and business and marketing librarian received in October. Now having had an opportunity to try the techniques, the director and the business librarian, who unfortunately was at a class this evening and was not able to um, attend, um, will lead a discussion regarding the ways this training might be used for the library's strategic planning process and as a means of integrating the library more directly into the community. So in the handouts that were at your places, right. um, there is a little pile of paper underneath the statistics. Mm -hmm. Um, the first piece of paper is the community conversation. Um, it is, it looks like this. These are the notes from your actual community conversation um, that allowed you to um, just try the technique out. And essentially what we did was um, we defined the community at the library district, both the city of the village of Clarkston and Independence Township. Um, and the board members that were in attendance uh, went through the 10 Harwood community conversation questions and, and this is the conversation that ensued. Now, the, the results of this conversation is not really what we want to talk about tonight, but I, right. I knew you'd be interested because it was a meeting conversation and I think people, I, I like to think people enjoyed it, but that's my own <laughs> personal take on it. Um, so the next piece of paper underneath, there's another little packet. Um, that says proposal of next steps for implementing the Harwood training. And essentially what Melissa and I did was um, we did a, a kind of analysis of what we heard in your community conversation. Um, and we came up with a um, proposal for next, of next steps for implementing the Harwood training. So the first thing that we would recommend is to create a committee of five to eight library staff members interested in gathering public knowledge about the library and community. There is a grant opportunity to train two additional library staff in the Harwood Techniques in March that could support the development of this strategy. Um, if we apply for this grant and we receive the grant, it would cost us absolutely nothing to train two additional people. Hmm. So, um, so that would be really nice. And, and I did email them and make sure that because we've already been through the training, would we still be eligible? And, he, and the person who was um, going to be gathering it said, actually you would receive extra points because you've already um, Become. shown that you're committed to the process and the strategy. Um, and it is a supportive cohort, cohort that goes on for nearly a year that would, that would help us implement the strategy into the community. So phase one, um, what we would like to do is conduct six to eight small group community conversations within the library, including staff, friends, and library board members. We would define the community as aspirations for the library itself. Um, everyone will be encouraged to sign up for a time slot that fits their schedule so the groupings will be random. So each, each community conversation would be a mix of board members, staff members, friends. And then we would do this several times and then um, Melissa and I would work on bringing together um, the likeness within each of these conversations in order to um, develop the purposes to generate open-minded conversation about the kind of library we hope to be based on where, where we've been, how far we've come, what our thinking is. Phase two of this process, um, once we've done this, we would open the door to wider community conversations um, with the community defined as aspirations for the library, meaning that we would bring in um, residents, business members, um, elected officials, anyone who is in school, anyone who would be interested in participating in a civic organization, religious organizations, anybody who would be interested in doing this, and have several of those that would be community, to, uh, with the purpose to generate open-ended conversations about the kind of, kind of library the community hopes for us to be, and then to see how our aspirations line up with the community's expectations. So that's how we would integrate this into part of the strategic planning process. 
And our thinking about using this process is, I think, um, maybe as you saw from the way the conversation worked, um, we've done we've done focus groups in the past. In 2011-12, we did focus groups and surveys, um, and we got some good information. Um, what we discovered is a lot of conversation about the library, things we were already doing. And what we were hoping was to generate more open conversation about how the library fits into the community as a whole. And we think this process might be a little bit more um, able to do that. So then the third phase of the process, um, and this was something that, that Melissa and I talked about um, in depth, um, and this may be something that, that the board would need to discuss further, but then the next step um, in that process, we would continue on with our strategic planning process, but we would also like to use this training to open the door to the wider community conversations with the library district, um, Clarkson Independence Township as a defined community. So more of a conversation like what you had on Monday night, where you're discussing the community itself. Um, and the purpose of that would be to generate open-ended conversations using the library as an objective, impartial facilitator of community forums that support lifelong learning, community understanding, and development. Um, and one of the things that Melissa and I had talked about was um, the way in which the library as a center for lifelong learning fits into the community and how this process um, could be assistive to some of um, to the community as a whole. For example, um, when I talked about this at the Friends um, board meeting, um, Eric Haven is on the Friends board and he's also on the city council. And he thought that this sort of a process would be very helpful to them um, and was really interested in the library as being an outside objective facilitator that could assist in that process. Um, and was interested in, I think Mary mentioned it as well, interested in me talking to the city manager about the possibility of assisting them in that way. That the library would then be um, viewed as a lifelong learning center in a more academic sense. Because a lot of what the library currently does um, is very good in terms of being very family oriented, but people who are um, adults who have children who are out on their own, maybe looking to the library for more, um, more academic use, a more lifelong learning sort of use, um, and that it would be a way to embed the library into the community in that way. So a little bit different way of thinking about the library's importance in the community. And also speaking to one of our mission points. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that was the one piece. We, we like the hardwood process for the strategic planning, but then this piece is a little bit, um, a little bit more abstract in, in whether or not that's our place to be doing that. Um, but as we talked about at the meeting on Monday night, one of the things that's really important, there's expert knowledge and public knowledge, and gathering public knowledge is very important, and then sharing public knowledge is very important. And one of the things that did come up in that conversation is who is, who is potentially an objective gatherer of that public knowledge. So. Melissa was very excited about the way that it could be used um, to assist the business community. And you know, as I said, we had talked about how it could assist the city and how we could be a part of um, the, how the community develops and grows in the future. I just think it's a good model. Uh, there's a new organization that's uh, trying to get a foothold in Clarkston, the uh, community cultural uh, arts. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the same, I see it working for that group as well to, to define how to go forward and how to mm -hmm. Um, be important in the community. And I think that any way that we can strengthen the community that we live in and operate in can only come back and help us meet their needs. Mm -hmm. But help us to grow and, you know, if we are meeting the needs of the community in, in more unusual, non-traditional ways, as things change and people start their usual conversation of why do we need a library, People, other people will be able to say, well, the library does this, this, and this. I think that I think that, that will strengthen the library as an organization if we can assist the community in that way. I think so, too. I think it's so a great effort. Yeah, was, it really was a great um, eye-opener for me. Our first whole, try. It was, it was Our first process. try at the process was yeah. interesting. It was fabulous. <laughs> 
I loved it. Well, I wanted to commend Melissa. She was an excellent She did an excellent she job. Was nervous walking into it, but I was really impressed um, at the end that she did. I thought she did an excellent job listening to what everybody said and tying ideas yes. together and, and uh, bringing, it, bringing it together. So and you know, at every point through the her. entire process, I think everybody felt like they were being heard, you know, and there was no judgment or anything, mm -hmm. just actually being heard. Mm -hmm. And that has to always help the situation. Yes. So do we have so people what's the next staff? Step? What's the next step then? Would we be applying for the grant? Um, the next step would be we're, we would like to identify some staff members that would like to be a part of a committee to work on this. Um, Melissa and I have identified a few people that, that we think will be interested, um, that we would like to approach and ask if they would like to make this part of their um, part of their work that they do, um, both full-time and part-time. Um, in terms of applying for the grant, um, we feel we would probably want to self send full-time employees um, to be trained. Yes, yeah, to right. be trained. Yeah. Only, only, and it's unfortunate because there, there are actually a couple of part-timers I would love to send, but unfortunately, I don't want to invest in the training with the possibility that they can't stay, and I would lose um, potentially somebody really valuable to to this whole process. process. Well, and, and as so. you go through the process, we just have that you know kind of minimal one, but mm -hmm. um, you sort of get it. You know, you sort of understand it, and. So I think stand. we can do some train the trainer. I think if we've that, got, that's, that's if we've got yeah. four yeah. solid full-time employees that really know how it works and, and are able to do this, um, it would be easy to train from there. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was a very, it's a fun process. Mm -hmm. um, I can see where if you got into some heated discussions, it might not, it might not be fun. It's a possibility. But I thought it was very eye-opening. Useful anyway, even if it isn't fun. And I was and I was the note taker, and I found it fascinating as I was taking these notes because I wasn't really supposed to talk. So I'm sitting there taking these notes, and and to see these sort of aha moments happening was really, um, really fun and enlightening for me because um, I'm just taking notes, and all of a sudden I would see somebody make a connection. And I thought, wow, that was that was really interesting. That was really neat, and um, and it, I found it very engaging and enlightening as well. Um, one of the things that they do recommend is that when you're doing full community conversations, that you might have two note takers who could oh, yeah. share because later. if you had a larger group, it would be more difficult. Yes. Usually you're supposed to have um, between 8 and 15 people, and, and we only had six, so it was a small group. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see how if you had a larger group, you would have a lot more I'd be typing a lot faster. Yes. <laughs> so. Right. so, well, it was an interesting, it was a good start. We got our, dip our toe in the process, yeah. and we enjoyed it. So, do we need a vote, or are we just discussing the possibility of moving on I don't know that we phases. I don't know we, that we need a vote I guess I would I would like to know that you feel that we are doing the right thing in this in this way if not I hope you would speak up and say that if you didn't think that this was the right path um, I'm trying to find something new and different in terms of how we approach a strategic plan I think that certainly you know going forward with phase one is a great idea and and probably phase two phase three would be the Phase three, we'll find out. Let's right. see how it goes. We'll right. never I know. mean, we're not ready to jump into phase three yet. Never. The concept of phase three I like, but then... You know. I, I do, um, I would like to ask your opinion in terms of phase three. Um, I know there's some genuine interest already on the part of the city. Um, and if I get approached by the city and they say, would you hold a community conversation for us, I want to make sure that the board would not be against us doing that. No. If we get asked, I'd be in support of it. I, I would be very much like, in support. I think that the city council might do just that. I don't know for sure, and I don't want to speak on their behalf. But if they do ask, I would like to be able to say definitively that the library board felt yes or no that it was something that we should do. So. I think that, that a little further down in the process, right now, I, I feel like it's a little too soon. To okay. Do that. Um, well, the holidays are coming, so I, I suspect right. we're not going to hear from them until maybe June. But I don't know. Right. Just after a little bit more um, tweaking of the process. Okay. It was very good, but I would feel that then maybe we the more community practice. would be more accepting of the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that the council themselves might want to try it. Which in the same way that you tried it. Perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that actually might um, help gain experience for our moderators, mm -hmm. too. 
to do it with. Yeah, I like that idea, with and we group. have new council members, members too, and I think it would really mm -hmm. help. Um, it is a nice getting to know you. It is. Yeah, exactly. That would be a wonderful way to use it. Mm -hmm. And it would kind of a Great. But we didn't want, if they asked us, I didn't want to say, oh, yes, we'll do that and have the board say, no, wait a minute. That's yeah. not really I think that if, it, if you're just talking about like a small group like the council and it does provide the extra opportunity for the moderators, mm -hmm. before you enter into the larger, the entire yeah. community, um, before we've gotten further in our process of the library community, mm -hmm. I agree that might, that okay. might be too soon, but, but to help the city council just, out. Right, as a... Know, yeah, because that's kind of a thing. that works on both sides, I think. That would, would probably, and I don't know that they'll want to do that. And I, I hope that the community isn't listening to this and saying, "Oh my gosh, the library is putting words in their mouth." But at the same time, there was genuine interest, and I wanted to be able to. If they asked, I wanted to be able to say, "Sure, we would love to help you out with that, but only if it's okay with, with the board to be able to do that." So, okay. I guess that's really all I needed then. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> all right. Any other comments or questions? If not, I'll accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Second. Who is our second? Dan. 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 Okay. He was faster. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Okay. That we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 6.15.